Good morning, thank you for joining us for our wellness webinar. My name's Kate Twitty. I'm a marketing coordinator here at Zido, uh, and today I'll be hosting this webinar. Typically when we do these webinars, we have live presenters. Uh, this month we'll be doing something a little bit different. As I was going through our former, or, or not former, our past wellness webinars, um, I really was, was taken back by this one. And not that, um, not to discredit any of our other wellness webinars because we always have amazing presenters, but I really felt that this webinar was something that is very applicable to us today uh, and would have meaning in all of our lives. Based on current world situations, I think many of us are struggling with a stress and anxiety uh, that we've never had to deal with before. And I feel that this webinar hit on uh, some tips and suggestions that really could benefit all of us. Um, this webinar was presented in May of 2018. It was presented by Christy Cronin. Uh, she's a PhD in HHP, and it really was an amazing presentation. Uh, we don't plan on doing a, a lot of these uh, pre-recorded webinars in the future, but I truly felt that this was something that could uh, benefit all of us today, and I hope that you'll all enjoy it. If you've tuned into some of our webinars before, I'm sure that you've heard this, but just to cover it, I just wanted to go over quickly uh, what Zyto does and doesn't do. Uh, Zyto technologies are not intended to be used in the diagnosis, cure, treatment, mitigation, or prevention of any disease or medical condition. Zyto is, however, a powerful tool for assisting in preventative wellness. Zyto supports energetic, functional, and emotional wellness, or what we like to call the wellness triad. Maintaining wellness in these areas can improve our ability to fend off stressors. I just wanted to quickly highlight an exciting release that we made a few months ago that I feel is still applicable uh, to all of our users today. A few months ago, we released the Balance Today's Basic Immunity Report. The New Balance Report focuses on the six foundational areas of immunity, the immune system, the gastrointestinal system, the lymphatic system, the respiratory system, mental and emotional stress, and sleep. As part of the creation of this report, we added 20 new biomarkers. And like I said earlier, this report is available to all Balance customers. If you have any questions or want to learn more about this report, there's a link here on the slide to our YouTube channel where we go more in depth on, on that report. For our select and elite customers, we also released a Today's Immunity Biosurvey. This was an add-on biosurvey for all the select and elite customers that allowed you to scan more than 280 biomarkers to determine which areas of immunity may need the most support. You can see the top responses of your selected product, general, and service virtual item. You can select from more than 600 no-sewed virtual items for homeopathic output. This biosurvey really allows you to gain important insights into immunity from the six different reports and vectors tab. You can learn more at the link below. I just wanted to encourage everyone to uh, stay tuned after the presentation to hear more about some of our Zyto promotions that we have going on. Uh, we really have some incredible deals going on and I think it will be worth your time. Without further ado, we'll revisit this recording by Christy Cronin. Once again, thank you all for tuning in and I hope that this uh, presentation is as meaningful to you as it is to me. I'm delighted to be with you all. This is great. Thank you for having me. Of course. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself, like how you came into this community, like what, what draws you into this natural health world? Tell us, give us a little bit of background about family or, and, and kind of your approach to things. I can. I will definitely uh, give you the very short version, uh, uh -huh. but I grew up in Switzerland, as you said, and um, I grew up with a mom who really was very interested in finding out about plants and herbs and we would go on expeditions in the summer to to pick things to be able to make teas and and healing salves and so on for the rest of the year and I um, I suppose as a child I didn't really see the value in it but I definitely did and I, uh, later on in life and I think it gave me the start to do what I do now I lived in Asia for seven years and I realized that people did things um, somewhat similarly with different herbs and, and plants so this definitely launched me into, I think, the career that I have today. That's awesome. 
Yeah, it's. I don't think you're alone and not not appreciating your parents' advice as a child, right? <laughs> We've all been there in one form or another, but we come around eventually, I think. <laughs> so, um, and thank you for sharing that, Christine. So today we're going to be talking about, and Christine will be sharing uh, her uh, expertise on mindful solutions to address stress and anxiety in our fast-paced culture. Uh, I believe this is something that uh, I don't know. It rings true to me. Uh, it uh, is something that. We're excited to, to bring to you today. Christine is going is to um, bring a lot of insight into that. But without further ado, I uh, want to turn the time back over to Christine and, and, and let you kind of get going. Thanks for being here, Christine. Thank you so much. So let's talk a little bit about stress. So I just want to say something about the name of my company. Satya in, in Sanskrit means the truth. So I think it would be a good idea right now that we get to the truth of the matter regarding stress. So stress is really one of the most important causes of disease in our society. Um, if, if not the only cause, of course, it definitely contrib contributes to uh, making things that we are suffering um, much worse. And I think it's something that we don't necessarily have the tools to address. So today, we'll look into a few of those tools. So looking at that picture, I'm pretty sure that most of you can relate. The reason I chose a woman is not only that, that just women get stressed, everybody does, but I think as women, we can definitely relate to that. We are pulled in a hundred different directions uh, between work and family and kids and you name it, everything. So stress is really constant and it's about learning how to address it. We can't live lives without stress today. I think it is not possible but we can definitely learn tools so that we don't have to deal with it on a constant basis. So what stresses us out? Um, I think that the word balance has been used in, in many ways and sometimes it kind of loses its meaning. I would, I would rather look at life in flow, but this is really two sides of the same coin. It's not having enough of something or having too much of something else. So the not enough would be not enough time, Obviously, not enough money, not enough energy, not enough focus. And if you are a practitioner, maybe not enough clients. When you look at the other side, it's too much to do, too many bills to pay, way too many obligations, and way too many responsibilities. We have way too much information as well. It's always at our fingertips. I believe I heard somewhere that today uh, we have as much information in about a day or two as our ancestors had in an entire lifetime. So we are drowning in information, but we are definitely starved for wisdom. And um, we can escape using information, which as you all know, using cell phones, we, we are very good at that. And it's not necessarily that great. So life, I would, I would prefer to see it as like a river. It should flow. You don't want to be in the rapids and you don't want to be where it's really calm. You just want to keep moving um, in the right direction and that's flow. So a little humor usually helps, um, however it's time to react. So we live in the United States of stress and many other things stress us. The food we eat, uh, which contains a lot of elements that should not be really in food or is not even really called food. We commute sometimes long distances and that's extremely stressful. Uh, we take uh, medication that stresses our body. We have relationship stress, money stress and children. I see children that are really, really stressed right now. Um, they are stressed in school, they do, you know, a lot of activities after school, and they sometimes don't even have the time to be children anymore. They are just stressed for everything. So what really is stress? I think it's, it's about looking at it. Stress encompasses so many things today. We just lump everything under, under that category. But it's really, um, it's got a definition. It's a mental, emotional, or physical strain. So today we'll talk a lot more about the emotional than the physical, but the physical is quite obvious. Uh, my son runs Ironmans and, and marathons, and that's definitely an incredible physical strain. But the emotional stress comes from not having our needs met. And as humans, we strive for what is called the four A's, and it's easy to remember that way. It's about acceptance, affection, appreciation, and attention. So we all want to be accepted for who we are. We all want to be shown affection here and there. We all want to be told we're doing a good job. And we all want to know that we matter. And any lack of those creates emotional and mental stress. 
um, what the um, the researcher that that came out with that is Dr. Marshall Rosenberg. You may have heard of him. He wrote a book called Nonviolent Communication, and he was actually teaching um, groups, and he still does, I believe, um, to be able to talk around the table in a peaceful way. He, he was sitting with some of the most um, conflicted countries around the world, trying to get them to sit together and actually talk. They weren't even talking to each other. So he, he has um, tried to bring peaceful resolutions to a lot of those conflicts. And, and Christine, I would just, I, I would just say, I would just mention, like, there's a lot of physical manifestations of emotional s stress. Correct. I mean, I know that we're not going to get into that too much, but, I mean, the, I, I think about times in my life when I have a, an increased amount of stress. It's like, I, I do feel like there's an actual physical element to that, where it's like, oh my goodness, like my heart rate may increase, or you know, my mental capacity is not as as clear as uh, as it may be otherwise. So. Like what have you seen? Like what have you seen? Like when when people are going through this, like what are some manifestations to help us recognize when they're ex when they're going through a stressful Actually, situation? Actually, get into this in a, in a few seconds. You're quite right. There's a lot of manifestations uh, physically that happens uh, that can happen when you're stressed. But I just want to mention maybe before we get there that not all stress is bad stress. And there's a term that has been coined by Dr. Hans Seeley that is called eustress, and not many people have heard of that, but that's a stress that is actually beneficial. It makes us move forward. So think of um, doing something that is big in your life, let's say organizing a wedding or, or getting a new degree, or again, competing in sports, or Jeff, maybe you can relate, having a new baby, right? It's a lot of work, it's a lot of stress, and not so much sleep. Uh, or moving somewhere where you don't know anyone. Those are enormous things, but they are motivating. Usually, you stress is short term, so you know that you're not going to be stuck there for too long. It's motivating and it focuses your energy. It's exciting, and it's something that we know we can deal with. So, you stress sometimes is really the flame that makes us um, do something and makes us um, achieve something better. So, this is really interesting as well. So now I'll talk a little bit about the physiology of stress, and this is where we'll get into some details on what it does to us. So some of you may be familiar with the sympathetic versus the parasympathetic nervous system. So if you think of it that way, the sympathetic nervous system is on the left side of your screen, and that's the great white um, shark attacking you. So it's an unmet need for security. It's when we get into that fight or flight response. On the right side is the parasympathetic nervous system response where we rest. We are actually able to reproduce and digest our food. Think of it as being on vacation. Uh, this is also where um, meditation brings you. So there's the physiological effects of stress and fight or flight. So a lot of things happen instantly. It's really immediate. Our body is incredible. It gets there in a millisecond. Your heart beats faster and it pumps more blood. Uh, your blood pressure rises, you consume more oxygen and expel more carbon dioxide, your perspiration increases, the adrenal glands pump out all those stress hormones that you need to get moving. The pancreas releases more glucagon for energy so you can, you can run, and of course less insulin raising blood sugar, because at that moment, um, whether you have diabetes or not is not going to matter. You need to be able to move. It shunts blood from the digestive organs to the muscles, it releases less rejuvenating hormones, your immune system is, gets suppressed, and your platelets become stickier. All these things are necessary in order to be able to fight, which I don't recommend in today's society, but to flee as well. So think of our ancestors who were um, always chased by a tiger or had major events happen to them where a split-second decision meant life or death. And these things helped them uh, either fight the tiger or flee and run faster than the tiger. But when you look at this list of physiological effects, all of them have an effect on what we call today disease. Think about an increased blood pressure. This, this will eventually lead to heart problems. When you think about the increased stress hormones, it creates anxiety and insomnia and addictions. Increased blood sugar, of course, is diabetes. Um, if you suppress the digestive system, you're going to eventually pay the price for that. Suppress the growth hormone, you're going to have 
premature aging and so on. So it, it's not um, without risks, obviously. What happens today, though, is that everything looks like that proverbial attacking tiger. Whether it's for real, where you have stressors that, that are real, like this lady had an accident and it's very real, or whether the stresses are imagined. Um, we don't know the difference between real and imagined. Unfortunately, our, our body is not able to figure out the difference. And the, the stressors, the stress hormones will fire no matter what. So all of that contributes to chronic stress, systemic inflammation, and, and disease. So as far as our ancestors, when they faced that danger, they ran, they fought, they ate the animal that was chasing them, or they were eaten. They didn't have much of a choice. They used those stress hormones for what they were designed. However, today we mainly sit and we are in a lot of fight or flight and mostly on a constant basis. Think about somebody cutting you off on the highway and you're sitting behind your wheel. Um, you are just going to stew there. So rather than having that fight or flight response, which is perfectly designed to make everything go back to base, we don't. We stay in that state of um, increased um, hormones and all of what we just discussed. So what can we do about it? Um, habits die hard. We do what we have always done. And we go back to that deep groove where uh, we feel most comfortable. We are used to doing the same thing always at the same time. So it's time for a change. And I want to talk about this experiment that was done with processional caterpillars because I think sometimes this is a little bit how we react. We're stuck um, where we are and we don't know how to change. So the processional caterpillar experiment, they put those little animals on the outside of a flower pot. It was a pretty big flower pot. And processional caterpillars follow one another. They always follow one another. And although there was food in the middle of the, the flower pot, they ran around and around and around and around in a circle until they died. And they died of hunger because they did not realize that they could break the circle and go get the food. So this is a good um, something to remember for all of us is that when we feel we are in that circle of around and around and around, it's time to break the habit. One great way to do that is to journal. If you've never journaled, I highly encourage you. It doesn't have to be pretty or beautiful. You just want to put your, th your thoughts down on paper. And um, some of the things that might help you start is to ask yourself some of those questions. And do it 20 days in a row at least so you can get into a better habit. You know you need 20, 21 days to integrate a new habit. So the questions would be, what do you do? And ask yourself, is this really something that makes your heart sing? What do you do it for? Who do you do it for? What do you want to do? Because maybe you want to make a change. And where do you want to go? So those can be starting points to ask better questions and maybe find better answers. You, you mentioned yeah, you mentioned that uh, you know you're wanting essentially we're trying to break a habit that's almost instinctive to how we are as human beings kind of and some of that may be uh, environments in which we place ourselves like the I choose to be in certain situations um, another situation may be that it's just I'm, I'm, a, I'm a creature of the environment in which I came into so you know like my parents are just uh, I, I'm thinking about a lot of just different individuals that may not they may have blinders of opportunity of how to break that and so it's really about almost opening up their ability to see uh, beyond what their reality at that time looks like. That's correct. And in, in some of the other um, solutions that we'll talk about in a minute is some of the devices that your company um, has, which I use in my office too, where you can actually look at things in a very different way. So very true. Absolutely. So I want to talk a little bit about the heart and brain um, connection. So. There's a lot of research that is being done um, by uh, different uh, scientists and uh, institutes around the world into the heart and brain connections. So we are constantly connected to the field that is around us. So you, you're probably familiar uh, with the magnetic field that is around the Earth. It's called the Taurus field. It goes up through the middle of the Earth and goes around. And it's actually um, measured. It's, it's something that... Um, 
we have, I think, 14 sensors around the world that measure the magnetic field and um, give constant feedback to see, it, does it expand, does it shrink? We get to see that. But we have our own personal magnetic field as well. And that comes up through the spine and up through the top of the head and around the body. And that's also called the torus field. It's the same thing. So there's a constant interaction between the greater environment and our own magnetic field. But what is super interesting, and that came out um, a, a little while ago, is that scientists found that about 40,000 cells that are in the heart actually behave like brain cells, and they're called sensory neurites. They are essentially a little brain that's contained within the heart. It does behave independently, which is really um, super interesting to know, is that it can learn and think independently, it can remember things, and it can communicate independently um, also from the, from the brain. So you probably all have heard those stories of um, people that had a heart transplant and it was successful, the surgery went well, they wake up, and all of a sudden they have very bizarre behaviors. Uh, one of the stories was of a young lady who was very fit, very healthy, something happened, she needed a heart transplant, was very tragic. And um, she woke up and one of the first things she requested was to eat chicken nuggets, which is something she would have never eaten. And everybody was wondering about it. Long story short, when they finally met the family of the donor, who was a young gentleman who'd had an accident, they realized that one of his favorite meals was chicken nuggets. And it was very, very odd to, for her to realize that there was some, some sort of memory there that was transmitted to her. So it's, it's, it's pretty interesting. But we are energetic beings having really a physical um, experience. So the energetic heart is the access point for us for our inner technology. When we develop, the heart starts beating before the brain develops. And I think um, we are not necessarily aware of this. We think everything starts with the brain, but it does not. The communication is constant going up and down between the heart and the brain, but um, it's not exactly um, even. So there's more information going from the heart to the brain than the other way around. So the heart and the mind are really like two radio stations and learning to perceive the difference requires practice. That's where meditation comes in, where we can learn um, to get into that state um, that, that gives us benefits for uh, daily life. And we'll talk about this in a minute, but learning to harmonize the heart and the brain really creates a direct line to the subconscious. It creates what we call coherence. So Steve Jobs said something that I really like. He said, have the courage to follow your heart and your intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. Everything else is secondary. So we are not always taught to follow intuition. We um, have maybe lost that, uh, that art. And your gut and your heart always talk to you, but we are often um, taught to disregard it and move on regardless. Actually, following intuition has saved um, people's lives um, on occasion. You know, when that person says, oh, I was about to get on that plane, but I did not, and the plane crashed. This is amazing intuition that um, saved their life. Seems like this is more of a societal, you know, as much as a societal issue as it is an individual issue, right? It's like we're trying to almost cookie cut uh, individuals into a certain mentality, a way of thinking, and now as individuals, we're, it's on, the onus is on us to try and change that, transform that, find new opportunity, you know, those, break that cycle like you're talking about. But it's a societal, fundamental issue at a society level. Definitely. And I think it's learning. We, we, we need to do a better job of teaching our, our family, our children particularly, that it is okay and you need to pay attention to what your intuition or your body is communicating and not disregard it. If something doesn't feel right to the heart, that's probably a good reason. And it's about taking a few minutes to try and figure it out and see. Um, so coherence, which I was um, talking about a second ago, is an actual frequency. It's 0 0.1 hertz, and it's the human resonant uh, frequency. It's when everything is in alignment with the planet. So at that point, optimum signals are sent from the heart to the brain and back. So it's about, again, having life in flow. 
you don't have any beaver dams in the river. It's just going freely from one to the other. So the benefits we have noticed um, physiologically from that is that the immune system gets stronger. So if you don't want to get a cold next winter, you want to start harmonizing your brain and your heart. How about that for easy, right? It increases DHEA uh, about 100% over a three-minute coherence exercise. That's amazing. So rejuvenating, it decreases blood pressure. So when you have people that are in, in good coherence, there's more cooperation, less aggression. People feel in sync. So clearly, I think as uh, looking at the world and the state of the world today, we have a lot of work to do to get people into coherence. Um, it would really help all these um, conflicted um, people, really. I mean, it's, it's everywhere. So incoherence, if you think of it, is like starting on the line when you are trying to make a phone call and it doesn't work. <laughs> this is incoherence. So we don't want to live that way. So we have a quick question for you, uh, Christine. So how do you test uh, human frequencies and make them resonate? So I would definitely work with one of the technologies we're, we're going to talk about now, which is Evox. So the frequencies in your body or in your mind um, get transmitted, if you like, through your voice. And Evox is one of those technologies that we can use to enlarge perceptions and um, and reframe what people think and, and how they view the world. Meditation is another one. You can't, tech, you can't really measure it with that, but it's one of the tools that will help in um, harmonizing that frequency. That's what I would use. Perfect. And then I, I think this kind of answers a secondary follow-up question to that is, can you expand on how to harmonize the brain and the heart? I mean, you're they're always communicating, but sometimes maybe there's a, a, a breakdown in between the two. How do, you, how do you bring them into alignment? So learning to be present. When we're trying so hard, I think, in this society to multitask, to do everything, to be everything for everyone, it really makes it very difficult to harmonize because life is in chaos. And although sometimes chaos is necessary because it makes us move forward, it's also not necessary all the time. So learning to be quiet, learning to take a few minutes, learning to find what makes your heart sing, go to the beach and walk or, or take a, a half hour you know, walk um, outside of your office or go for a hike on a weekend. These are all things that make you be more coherent with yourself. And the speed of life right now does not really favor that very much, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is a pity. Yeah. So um, talking about tools to help everybody, um, we'll go from ancient wisdom tools, which I will teach you about, to, of course, the modern technologies to, um, to help. So this... Um, if you are familiar with Zyto technology, you will recognize that. This is part of the balance system, which I use in my office. And um, it's wonderful to be able to test the emotions with that. And it gives us a little bit of an idea of where the person tested is at. So in that case, as you can see, there's a lot of imbalance in some pretty intense um, emotions. So we know that there's probably a fair uh, level of stress in, in that client. And in that case, I would definitely recommend that they do, um, you use the, um, the Evox to try and, and work through that. But it's really good to be able to see it. And often when I go through that with the client, they look at this and it totally speaks to them. They can absolutely understand where this is from. So this is the Evox. If you've never seen it, it's an amazing technology that allows us to map the human voice and to work on those frequencies and we get to see where in those um, little pie slices if you like um, someone has an imbalance in the frequencies and then we work on this in order to get it to release it's an incredible um, piece of technology that i have seen in action here in the office work and and give people resolution on many many different things whether it's a phobia or no trauma or if they are in a state of grief, um, it has it has made a very big difference to um, to their life. But today, I'm going to give you some tools that you can practice every day, and you can hopefully teach to other people as well 
so you can use these anytime you feel you're stressed so somebody said how you do anything is how you do everything and it's conflicted to know who actually said it first but it's really true and it's how you start your day is how your day goes either you run the day or you let the day run you so the first thing is to get up on the right side of the bed and I'm not talking about geography here I'm talking about remembering that when you start your day it starts the second you open your eyes and the second you put your feet on the ground so starting the day in mental gratitude is a beautiful thing and that you can do when you're still lying down you want to start your day with a list of about 10 things that you are grateful for it can be small things it can be big things it doesn't really matter but you want to picture that in your mind and literally visualize it and that puts your whole system in that state of gratitude and you can't be fearful you can't be angry while you are in a gratitude state so it's a really great thing to start the day take a few deep breaths which will oxygenate you and make the the day go right and then you want to start and create your energy shield so i don't know if any of you are familiar with that but I will actually show you that it's very simple so you might want to take your hands and rub them together you rub them together for about 10 15 20 seconds and then you can feel you can feel energy right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you want to then put this energy field that you created around you and you can visualize most of it you don't physically have to go around your body but you want to create this this bubble, for want of a better word, and it's not a bubble that uh, will keep you away from anything or anyone. It's just a little bit of a, of a protection so that when something comes at you, you have a second to think about it and not be in a constant reaction state. So this energy shield, it's actually a really fun thing to do with kids when you teach them that, because you can teach them to fill their bubble with sprinkles or with flowers or with colors or and kids get it and they love to do that and you literally send them to school with this little energy bubble around them and they love it and they'll do it every day and teach them that when things uh, get a little stressful for them they need to they need to patch up their energy shield teach them like like somebody puts plaster on a wall they need to patch up the holes and um, it works really well and they love that the other thing you can do first thing when you get up is the second you put your feet on the ground you will repeat that with every step you take left foot thank right foot you and you go thank you thank you thank you and if you go to the bathroom to brush your teeth you'll say thank you with each step you take that will put you in that state of gratitude as well uh, which is so key to start the day One thing I want to teach you as well is called the heart lock-in technique. Um, some of you may have heard of the Heart Math Institute, which is located in California, and they do a lot of research um, in the heart-mind connection. And um, the coherence I was talking about a minute ago comes from their research. So you can do this anytime, anywhere, but ideally at least once a day. Um, this will have amazing, an amazing cascade of benefits for hours after you do this. So you might want to take a deep breath and close your eyes. You're going to put one of your hands on your heart center. And you're going to become quietly aware and focus inward. You're going to slow down your breathing. When you're breathing slow, it means you're safe. So if you don't feel safe, you're going to have a hard time getting in a heart lock technique. So you learn how to breathe to reduce those stress hormones. And then in your mind, you want to create a feeling for something or someone of care, appreciation, gratitude, and compassion. So you picture, let's say you picture your child, right? And you see their face in your mind's eye. And now you're going to breathe and visualize your breathing through your heart. You can use imagery for that. You can see that picture of your child 
as you're breathing in through your heart. And if you breathe gently like this for three minutes, that is going to control about 1,300 biochemical reactions, anything from anti-aging hormones to your immune response, and your cardiovascular system will benefit. If you have a hard time um, imagining or visualizing, you could actually focus on a picture, you could focus on a painting, you could focus on something that you feel good about. So the heart lock technique um, is really simple to do once you've practiced it a little bit, and literally you can do this anywhere, anytime, and it's um, really helpful when you're feeling stressed. You've like put me totally at like ease right now. <laughs> I mean, even just kind of going through that, it's just like, oh my goodness, like you really do feel a difference when you're doing those things. I'll wake everybody up at the end. Yeah. <laughs> We need a loud horn to get everyone's attention again, right? <laughs> so the next, um, the next technique that I love to teach, and I literally te teach this to everybody who comes in through my doors because it works so amazingly well, is a, an Ayurvedic technique called Nadi Shodhana. I'm pretty sure everybody on the line here is familiar with yoga. Yoga and Ayurveda are sister sciences, and Ayurveda is more the physical... I would say medical side and, and yoga is the movement side, but they are both um, related. And Nadi Shodhana is a, a breathing technique that is used often in yoga practices, and it does amazing um, things to the body again. So uh, your left nostril oxygenates the right side of your brain mainly, and then the right nostril oxygenates the left side of your brain. About every 45 minutes or so, the brain favors one side over the other. We don't, we don't really notice that at all, um, but that's the way it works. So in order to feel balanced and grounded and to help our body de-stress, it's really good to reoxygenate both sides of the brain equally. So when you breathe um, through your nostrils like this, it calms your mind, it soothes anxiety and stress, it's balancing, of course, it helps focus, so clear thinking. And it's extremely grounding. There's actually research, medical research, that you can look on pub, uh, pubmed.gov, where um, in hospital settings, they had people practicing that, and their blood pressure goes way down. So it's very simple, and I'm going to teach it to you right now. If you are right-handed, you want to you wanna take whatever hand is your dominant hand, and you take two fingers that you place on the bridge of your nose very gently. Don't push too hard. And then you put your thumb on one nostril, and your fourth finger probably on the other side and you're going to close one side it doesn't matter which one you start with and you're going to breathe all the way in all the way deep into your stomach then you're going to close everything and then you open the other side and you breathe all the way out through that same nostril that's open you're going to breathe very gently but slowly and deeply all the way in, close everything, and now breathe out the other side. We'll do it one more time. Breathe in all the way deep, close. The other side, breathe out. Breathe in all the way, close. And open the other side and breathe out. I hope everybody got that. So this is one of these things, again, you can do anytime, anywhere. It helps if you wake up at night and you have a hard time going back to sleep. This is very helpful. Um, it's really helpful to do this if you have a meeting or something you need to attend and you're a little nervous about it or before. Um, I love teaching this to kids because they need it in school if they have a test to take. It's very, very focusing and grounding. And it works. It's amazing it works. So practice it before you actually need it. Then you'll have it, um, you'll know it instinctively, and it's really easy to do. Meditation. We'll touch a little bit on meditation. I could do a whole webinar on meditation, but we won't do that. So 
meditation, um, hopefully a, a, a good chunk of you on the line today are um, having a regular meditation practice. But if you don't, I highly encourage you to do that. Meditation sometimes scares people because they think that they need to learn a lot of things or that it's a little bizarre and they see monks levitating. And it's not, it's not really that, although some of it can be, but Meditation is a direct way to inner silence, and it's a beautiful thing. We live in a busy, busy, busy um, society, and we need silence. So learning your own way back in is really important. Just the same as the breathing we did before, it lowers blood pressure. It lowers stress hormones. It's, it's, very, very, um, it's been proven in many studies. It influences the rest of your day. So if you only meditate for 5 or 10 minutes, the other 23 hours and 50 minutes will be influenced by what you've done. It provides more rest than sleep. So if you, um, if you want to meditate at night, just be aware that it might um, re rejuvenate you a little too much and you don't want to meditate right before bed. It increases your well-being generally and it allows you to become the observer. Um, what I mean by getting out to the sandbox is it allows you to take that step back and see things as they are and not necessarily just jumping in with both feet and, um, and reacting to everything that comes your way. So it gives you these few seconds of, of um, pause to figure things out. So how do you meditate? Um, the thing I hear probably just about every day is I can't. My brain is too busy and I never get, um, you know, I, I can't quieten down. So you cannot really um, be in life with zero thoughts. It is not possible. The only time that we don't have any thoughts is when the body is, is dead. Uh, even in sleep, you have things going on with your, with your mind. So you can't. The key is to control that. So there's a few things you can do. And that's more of a personality thing. That's, it's neither right nor wrong. Some like to have music, some to ha like to look at something, and some love silence. So it really doesn't matter um, as long as you meditate. So watching your breath rise and fall is really good. And you might visualize that as a little uh, ping pong ball that comes up and goes down and comes up and goes down. And that can be enough to focus. Before you meditate, you might want to ask yourself some of those questions which will um, try and direct your thoughts. The first question is, who am I? And that's a really big question. We play very different roles all day long. We can be a coworker, a mother, a, a wife, a daughter, you know, all of these are just roles. But who really, who are you um, is really important to figure out. What do you want? What do you want in life? Um, it can be anything. There's no right or wrong again. And then what is your purpose, your dharma in Sanskrit? What are you here for? There's something that you are here for that no one else can do as well as you. What is that? And when you can figure that out, a lot of those obstacles in life are removed. For some of you who might want to try a mantra, a mantra is just sound, very much like the evox. It's a resonance. It's just a frequency. So those words don't mean anything. They are just a frequency to direct um, meditation. So Om Bija Nama, if you're trying to figure out how to say that, I'll say it again. Om Bija Nama is a mantra that everybody can use. Um, it's, it's just making your brain stay within these boundaries. If you repeat this sil silently, um, you can keep on track, which is a little bit easier. But there's no right or wrong way to meditate as long as you do. So something um, that, again, we could do a whole webinar on is the five gateways to experience life. And today I want to talk about the ears, but obviously it's the five senses. So ear, skin, eyes, nose, and tongue. But what you listen to imprints in you. And today, I feel that often we are filling silence with noise. It's not um, listening to a beautiful piece of music is great, but listening to the TV as a background or the radio. One of my clients actually came in one day and she said, first thing she does when she wakes up is to put the TV and the radio on because silence is scary. 
So this is very stressful as well. So imagine listening to the news every day for hours on end. Um, how stressful is that? And what does it leave in you? So our body is about 75% water or so, and we imprint that resonance of things that are not very nice in that water, and it's in there, and it stays in there. But we can use sounds as stress relief as well. So nature sounds are beautiful. Think of a, a nice spring day like today where you have the birds singing when you wake up. How gorgeous is that? And there's primordial sounds, which we'll, we'll listen to in a second. And of course, beautiful music, whatever um, makes you happy. So we're going to try and listen to the primordial sounds now and see how they make you feel. Hopefully everybody heard that. And I'm sure that listening to some of these, you could picture places you've been or people you know. And uh, using those primordial sounds are really calming on the whole physiology as well. Imagine and, or remember if your parents the first time you heard the heartbeats of your yet-to-be-born child. Those are sounds that we can relate to. Laughter. Nobody laughs enough, <laughs> really. We can all um, do more of that. Laughter relieves stress. It adds life to your years. I love that Charlie Chaplin said, a day without laughter is a day wasted. And laughter is not to be underestimated. It's one of these things that seems so simple, but yet um, it releases all the stress hormones and um, allows us to have a better life. So how to go about it with these things that we talked about today? So add one new habit and practice it for 21 days straight. There's no need to try and do everything um, in one go, but just add one thing. And when you master it, then you can add another. It's much easier that way. Um, make conscious choices and eliminate autopilot. We often kind of sleepwalk through our days and um, making conscious choices to be present really are helpful. So breathing to come back into our body is really useful. 
and most of all, have fun. I think that um, that's the the biggest thing. If it's a chore, you're not going to do it. So have fun. It's really fun to to learn new things and practice them. So here's a little information, and I'm going to turn it back over to Jeff. Christine, thank you. As I mentioned earlier, we do have some incredible promotions going on. These are for our pro systems. For our Zyto Select and Evox systems, with every new purchase, you're going to get six months free subscription as well as $500 off. With the purchase of a Zyto Elite system, you'll get six months free and $750 off. If you've never looked at our pro products before and are just a balanced user or new to Zyto, I'd encourage you to go online to our website and look at some of our product pages and, and see the information that's there and the additional value that can be added by upgrading to a pro system. If you have any additional questions beyond that, we're more than happy to schedule a demo with you where you can go in and, and see firsthand uh, how these professional systems work. Before we head out today, I just want to give a, a quick uh, highlight of our Zyto remote system. In today's world where many of us are facing uh, different levels of restrictions and quarantines, it can be hard to continue to nurture your business uh, when you have a software that requires in-person contact. With that in mind, uh, the Zyto Remote can be a huge tool for you. Uh, Zyto Remote allows you to connect your client and scan them from anywhere in the world. Uh, whether that be from five miles away or from across the globe, uh, it will allow you to continue to grow your business and continue to provide wellness solutions for your clients. If you have any questions, I would encourage you to look at the link below uh, where you can get more information about the, uh, the remote hand cradle. Uh, it truly is something that can, can benefit your business, especially in this time. As we leave this webinar today, I hope that you all have learned some new ways to manage your stress and anxiety. I'd encourage all of you to sign up for our Zyto Wellness Webinar next month. It'll be on tools for improving relationships. This will be on August 5th at 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. Thanks again for joining us. We'll see you next time.